on this episode of Game Changers. Travis, you may be best known for the Lance Armstrong case. During that entire process, I know that you got a lot of death threats. Yeah, we did. But we're not doing our job if we're gonna let those kind of things deter us from honoring the oath that we took. The game is always changing. In this series, we take a look at those who are changing the sports world on and off the field. I'm your host, Armin Amirian, and this is T-Mobile's Game Changers. Hey folks, Armin Amirian here in Colorado Springs, and I'm here to talk to Travis Tiger. He's the man you may know as the guy who brought down Lance Armstrong. So what drives a guy to be the last bastion of integrity in sports? Let's find out. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Travis nice. Tiger from USADA. Armin, pleasure to meet hey, you. Hey, good to meet you too. You know, office buildings are cool and all, but I hear Colorado Springs is one of the <laughs> nicest parks in the country. Absolutely. Let's go check it out. Should we go? Sounds good. In 2001, the United States Anti-Doping Agency was recognized by Congress as the official anti-doping agency for Olympic, Paralympic, and Pan-American sport in the United States. USADA's stringent testing system is viewed as one of the most rigorous and anti-doping programs in the world. Across the globe, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency is viewed as the gold standard for protecting clean competition and the integrity of sport. But that hasn't always been the case. So what's like the career path that brings you to the, being the CEO of USADA? Yeah, you know, I, I went to law school right at the time as I was graduating from law school about a year after the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency got started in late 2000 after the Sydney Olympic Games. And I think what we saw when we first got started was the world believed the U.S. athletes were not held to the highest standard and that they were the dirtiest athletes. She is a decorated athlete, but now Marion Jones is accused of taking illegal performance enhancing drugs. We had a number of positive tests, the infamous 13 prior to Sydney. So there were some facts that supported this view. I have let my country down and I have let myself down. You know, that's really fascinating. I never knew that that was kind of the impetus of USADA starting up. The perception was such that when you have the fox guarding the hen house, so when you have the USOC testing its own athletes, prosecuting its own athletes, the interest is not for them to hold athletes accountable. The interest is for them to go out and win medals and hopefully not get caught. You cannot both promote and police your own sport. How big of a problem, I mean, however you want to measure it, is doping in sports? I think the temptation to dope is huge. Because if you think about it, we, as a society, we lionize the winner and only the winner. And if there's a, a drug out there that's going to make a material difference, I, I think the temptation to use that is huge. And it's exactly why we have to ensure that we have a system in place that deters that. So what are the challenges that you face in trying to make this change? I think it's the win-at-all-cost culture. We've had a 14-year-old, 15-year-old inline roller skater whose dad, coach, and trainer had him on a drug program in order to, to be the best in inline roller skating. That to us was a sad realization of the forces that we're up against. There is a determination by some to win by any means necessary. And that's the problem. Some breaking news now on Lance Armstrong. The global governing body of cycling will ban Armstrong for life and strip him of his seven tour titles. Travis, you may be best known for the Lance Armstrong case, so give me a little bit more detail about that. You know, it was never about an individual rider. It was about trying to change the system. It might have been actually easier just to give lengthy bans to the athletes who were involved with doping, but we knew that was not going to have the systemic change that we needed in the sport, so we literally used around our office, dismantle the system, because what we saw and the evidence we received while Lance participated, so did a whole host of other riders. But there were also doctors, team managers, trainers who were involved with this corruption. So we had to get rid of those who oversaw that corrupt period in pro cycling. Dismantling the system, would you say that was successful? I, I think it was. The president of the sport was thrown out of office. Doctors within the sport had received sanctions. The new president came in on a clean sport platform. They set up an independent foundation that now does all of their anti-doping work. So it's separate from promoting and policing. 
And we're hearing from clean athletes all the time that the bias has shifted in their favor. During that entire process, I know that you got a lot of death threats. Yeah, we did. They were emails that came in to me. But the FBI followed up on them and, you know, fortunately held them accountable for threatening and trying to intimidate people. And let's be real, there are a lot of powers out there that don't want us to be successful because they like the victories. They like the money that go to the winners regardless of how they win. But we're not doing our job if we're going to let those kind of things deter us from honoring the oath that we took to protect clean athletes' rights. Protecting clean athletes' ability to compete on an even playing field is no small task. By focusing on dismantling the system, Travis has changed the game on U.S. soil. But that's not enough. What is it that the rest of the world's doing compared to what USADA is doing? We obviously, with this Russia scandal, see that the world is not being held to the same standard. Good morning and welcome to this hearing on ways to improve and strengthen the international anti-doping system. Mr. Tiger, recognized for five minutes. We find ourselves at a critical juncture for the soul of sport. There's no timelier example than the uncovering of Russia's widespread state-supported doping system. Over a thousand Russian athletes from over 30 sports have been implicated in this drug program. At least two Olympic games were corrupted. Was there any surprise in learning how pervasive the Russian doping conspiracy was? I, I think absolutely. The number of athletes, how high it went into the government, and the way they were able to get the bid to host Sochi there and then swap their samples during the games to ensure that they weren't caught, I think it's a scheme no one could have possibly imagined separating the policing and protecting of clean athletes from the sports organization itself. How common is that? Not as common as it should be. We see holes in the global system that have to be fixed. The primary one is making sure that WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, is truly independent. Because one athlete who gets robbed is an injustice that we can't possibly tolerate. What would sport look like if that was just legal and okay to do? If we suddenly said, look, let's just let them do whatever they want, so it's not a fraud to use these drugs, um, it's gonna turn into a freak show. You know, we don't love the Tour de France because it's robots cycling up the mountain. We love it because it's human. I think it would totally change the very nature of sport. What was one of the most inspirational stories of our time, unfortunately, was built on a foundation of fraud. It's shown the dark side of what sport can become. In sport, very nature of sport is rules. And if we cast aside the rules and let the best cheater suddenly win, then it erodes everything valuable about sport. Right. It's a crazy world. I don't think any of us want to go down. Hanging out with Travis Tiger today was really cool. I got a chance to learn about what drives the man behind the most successful anti-doping agency in the world. And it was a really simple answer, integrity. He wants to do the right thing at the right time, and that's what makes him the perfect man to be in charge of USADA. Join us next time for another episode of T-Mobile's Game Changers.